Yo, people. Before we start today's episode, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors for this season, Watchbox UK. Based down in Hatton Gardens, they're leading the way in supplying you with the best prices for buying, selling and sourcing top of the range watches and high quality jewels. Head over to their Instagram, the link will be in the bio and make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Please enjoy the episode. Yes, people, I'm back with another episode of On The Judy and today I've got a Premier League goal scoring legend. Finally got him on. Jermaine Defoe, what's going on, brother? How you doing? You right? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. Listen, the graph we have to do to get you get get you on this pod, crazy. But listen, yeah, I know. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm, yeah, I'm obviously grateful to be here, my man. Thank you, thank you. I'm just gonna start off a question that a lot of people have asked me is, who would you say was your greatest strike partner? Greatest strike partner, probably Crouchy. You know. A lot of people say that, yeah, don't they? Yeah. And I think the reason why I say that, because obviously people say, oh yeah, you play with obviously Paolo Di Canio when I was young at West Ham. Played with Les Ferdinand. People probably can't remember yeah, that. Yeah. I played with like then I signed for Tottenham, played with Robbie Keane. Oh, so I yeah, you with, and Keane were quiet. I, I played with, you know, Canute. He was so techie, in it, like, yeah. Big names, even when he went to Seville in Spain. But I think the reason why I say Crouchy is because obviously I played what like, Tottenham, Portsmouth, England. I think if you look at our numbers, the amount of goals that we scored together. It's like, I have to say Crouchy. No. Berber, I played with Berber. Oh my God. Do you know what I mean? Hey, so, yeah. Is his touch proper? Unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, when he signed you, and you know you like, listen, play with top players. Yeah. Come in training, goal kick. And you know, he just like, I looked down for it. No. <laughs> and for me, you have to, to impress me, right? I was like, <laughs> nah, this guy is different. But Crouchy, but even Crouchy's touch for a big man, because when you look at him, he don't even look like a yeah, footballer. Yeah, yeah. But Crouchy, just had the, like a, an understanding. It's not like we used to work on things in training. It just clicked. Big man, little man. Like people just think that we just used to just ping it to Crouchy's head. He could bring the ball down. I knew when to sort of like come in front of him. Yeah, yeah. So in a case of just like hitting it to Crouchy and he just flicked on for me, just that understanding. But I guess for you, you're just working off instinct because I, I saw you as an instinct striker, like yeah. in and around the box problems. Yeah, you know most, I think most of my finishes were like instinctive because I practiced yeah. it. Like I practiced like, that's what I say to young players. If you put the work in, like, I, was the last, I was the last one on the training pitch. Like, you see that, yeah? A lot of people say that, but are you just saying it to gas yourself? or was well, it, No, 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 you can speak to anyone. Speak to coaches, speak to Tony Carr. Nah. Speak to anyone. I was the last one on the training pitch. And it wasn't, it wasn't like... Oh, sorry, you said last one on. Yeah, yeah, go on, go on. Yeah, I was, I was, I was the last one to, to, to leave. And for me, it wasn't even like the coaches said to me, I need to stay behind and do extras. I just wanted to do it. I, I, I didn't understand why finish training at half 12, go and have lunch and go home. Like, what's the point? Like, if I'm here, yeah. I want to improve every single day. Now, I know like, a lot of players will say that, but I was just obsessed with football, to be honest. I was just obsessed. Like, that's all I, that's all I thought about. That's all I wanted to do. The feeling that I got from scoring goals was just like something that I'd never felt before. So for me, I just wanted to do everything I could to make sure that I just keep on having that same feeling. I wanted to score in every single game, every training session I wanted to score. And I, like, even in the youth team at West Ham, I used to like, I finished training and I say to one of the goalkeepers, oh, so you can just stay out. So we can just do some finishes. But I used to practice all, but when I, when I was finishing in training, I used to do it like it was a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the same intensity. You know, you get a lot of players that, you know, the ball comes to them to take one touch, look up, take it. It's not realistic. <laughs> do you know what I mean, I didn't want to be like, everything I did was like match tempo. Yeah, so yeah, it's realistic. Yeah. So that, when I get the chance on a weekend, all my instincts will just kick in. Because a lot of times I'll finish and I'll be like, don't even know what I was thinking there. After games, people say, oh, what was you thinking? I don't even know. Just where's the goal? Like, yeah, I don't yeah. even know. Like, you just, your instincts just kick in and you just do it. Well, that's decent. It's, yeah. You're lucky because like, I played a lot, of, I played non-league and to ask a keeper to stay out after training yeah. on a Tuesday, like, what, Thursday, what like, no home. chance. Talking about? No chance. They're like, the weirdos of the yeah. game anyways. Got the wife mission, you can get home. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, they've been at work all day and they're always yeah. like scaffolders or something. I don't something, think there's any so. other way though, to be honest. Exactly, yeah. I think whatever you want to do, if you put in, and I used to get satisfied, I used to love it when I used to, I remember the Spurs training ground, the old training ground. So we used to train on, imagine this pitch is here and there was like a, like a little flyover thing. So basically when the players leave, you can see them while you're still on the pitch. <laughs> okay, okay. So I remember finishing, practicing and I'm seeing some of the boys leaving, but I'm still there training. And these are forwards that I'm competing against. They're my friends. Yeah, yeah. But I used to love it. So, right, well, right, he's at home and I'm still here. They can't then ask I'll, why you're starting. Yeah, then I'll go in the gym. I'll do my gym work. Then cut any corners, do my gym work. Because at the end of the day, I'm, like, I was for a centre forward. 
a number nine, you're back to goal. You have to be strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the biggest, but resistance stuff. I used to love it. I used to love the gym. Decent. I'd be leaving the training ground at four o'clock to the point where when I signed for Rangers, remember this is the back end of my career. I remember one of my first weeks. So I'm in the, I'm in the change rooms. I'm in the ice bath. Everyone's going home. I'm sitting there on my own, being myself. The kit man's walked in. We man, what are you doing there? <laughs> what do you mean? Goes, it's four o'clock. You're not going home? I said, yeah, I'm going home soon. What have you been doing? I said, obviously, I didn't do a bit extra. I've done stuff in the gym and I've just done an ice bath, massage, and then I'm going home. Now, he's seen the likes of Gaza, Sunes, all these legends at the club. Yeah. He said, no, I've never seen anything like it. That's so four o'clock. said, go home. What's wrong with you? I've got, I've got to wash the kit. Go home. <laughs> That's sick to be fair. It was just, I didn't see the point of just rushing, rushing to like, just get home for two o'clock to do what? Sit on a PlayStation. <laughs> I'd love to do that. To yeah. Be fair. Listen, um, you see that the afters bit ice bath. There's only one player comes to mind because he had to look after himself when his team got even bigger. Raul, so he was around when he was around the back end of his career, like Benzema and that were coming through. So he was like unbelievable to keep up, player to keep up. Uh, he yeah. had to get all the ice baths and the hydro Everything. stuff in his in his house, innit? it? Yep. And it's kind of like one percent. I think you have to do it to with Raul. What a player! Yeah, exactly. Rio yeah. said he's one of the hardest. Was that he's had to mark? Because when you think about Raul, right, he wasn't like quick. You wouldn't say he was strong, mm. but he was just so clever. Like, and he scored a lot of goals. And I always say that with people, like, you see a lot of kids, you know, when they're small and stuff and they're late like developers, you know, I think parents worry, maybe he's too small. I said, don't mean anything. If you're quick in there, like, he was so, like, and he's finishing all sorts of goals. Then he scored like 300 or something goals for Real Madrid. Silly. Science. Yeah, so like, and, and like you said, I didn't even know that. The fact that he got all the, like, the... All of the, all the new technology was in put his, into house. his house, yeah. So he can keep up at training. Well, there you go. And that's why he was successful. It's, it's, there's no secret. It's, it's, You've got to put the graft in there, no to, matter yeah. how good you are. And I see, all right, let's talk about early life. What was it like growing up in East London? Is it Beckton? Canning Town. Canning Town. Proud, Warzone man. now. I'm so, Warzone. But it, to be fair, even back then, it weren't, it weren't as bad as it is now. But at the same time, it wasn't easy growing up in East End. Because come from like, obviously, working club, class background, big family. Um, footballing family okay. like my uncles played my dad played um, and as as family like cousins that like, would see a lot of things on the street but I think for me I, 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 I probably come from my mum to be honest I always looked at the bigger picture Yeah. so there was times where I'd see my friends like smoking and that or they're drinking and, or, or they're hanging about with girls and of course when you're young you do sit there and think oh I want to do that but at the same time I always had that little thing at the back of my mind saying you know what I love football too much. I don't want to, because at the end of the day, it's some, sometimes it's difficult to look at the bigger picture when you're young. Of course, Because you just live for now. I just want to enjoy myself. Yeah. I want to be smoking and drinking with my friends. But I think I would just, there was a part of me that didn't want to let my my mum down, my nan and granddad. But I think I just didn't want to, didn't want to just, I didn't want anything to get in the way of my football. Because I know where I wanted to be. Like I said, I was just obsessed. Yeah, so yeah. I knew, right, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get there. And that's, that was my mentality. But growing up, it weren't, it weren't easy because we yeah. saw a lot yeah, of course, stuff, course. as you can imagine. Of course. And touching on that, you say you've got a big family. Your brother, RIP. Were you and him close? Yeah, me and Gav, me and Gav was close. Like, to the point where, as, when we left school, then obviously, because obviously my half-brother, so obviously he was doing his music stuff. Yeah. I'm doing my football. I've got a scholarship to go to Lillyshaw for two years okay, when I was yeah. 14. So I was... Out of East London, yeah. I was in Shropshire, countryside, seeing trees and that. Nowhere, like, yeah, yeah. What's that? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like in the countryside, it was it was crazy. We went to like a like a normal school in the area, which was a mixed school. I went to St Bonaventures, which was all boys school. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it was it was different, but again, it was just part of the journey. But like with Gavin, then when I used to come back, he used to come to my mum's for the weekend and stuff. Spent decent, a lot of time decent, with Gavin, yeah. obviously, and people start talking about his music and all that sort of stuff. So I was like, wow. <laughs> you know what I mean, you got football in the family, you got music, so it was good and that. And then, and then obviously, what happened to Gav, that was, as you can, that was tough. Yeah, family, because I was actually training. When you I, got I, was, I, was, I was training, I'll never forget it. I was training. It was the day before we played Man United, and my mum turned up at the training ground. And then I remember Harry Redknapp calling me off the pitch saying, oh, your mum wants to speak to you in a car park. I was like, it's a bit random, but yeah. I knew. Like, you know, just my instincts, yeah, I just yeah. thought, that's not. That's not normal. My mum just turned up at the, course, tra- at the yeah. training ground. Unless I've upset her about something. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So it was like, um, and then when she told me, and like, obviously Gav's on the life support machine, so we rushed to the hospital and that, and it was just that one of the hardest days of our lives. So all my family, it was, it was tough, but 
like you said, all the people that you, you lose, you can still feel them with you. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. To be fair, I'm a grime head, so like, n- like seeing him, yeah. he was like the hype man. He used to say Someone like, came up to me recently, actually. I went to the, the Tottenham United game and then uh, this young girl came up to me and said, oh, I, I loved your brother's music and stuff like that. Like, even to this day and that, so. Yeah, it's crazy. Do, mm. you, do, do you remember any of his bars? Do you know what? It's crazy you say that. I've got big bars on my, on my wrist. Better. Look, better. <laughs> big bars. That's all I need to hear. That's all I need to see. Better, better. I was going to ask you to uh, spit them, but... Yeah. That's, that's even better, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's even better. <laughs> yeah. right, um, you spoke about your love of football. Did you start young? Really young. Well, Bro, I was walking on eight months. <laughs> what? I was walking eight months. Exactly. No way. My mum told me that. I said, nah. You're not bow-legged or anything? Bro, nah. Not that. Let <laughs> the king, bro. Not me. <laughs> I was walking at eight months. So that tells you what sort of, for the time, so I was two and then apparently my mom said she took me to the park when I was two, right? And then she obviously gave me a ball because in the house, I used to roll like my, uh, my socks. Like I used to roll them, yeah. uh, like all my school socks, like I'd roll them up. I should be smashing it around the house, like breaking everything. My nanny would be, <laughs> you're breaking my light bulbs. You're <laughs> like, I said, nanny, don't worry. When I, <laughs> when I, when I make it as a professional yeah, footballer, yeah. I'll buy you these things back. Like, this is young. So anyway, so before then, so when I was two, my mom took me to the park, bought me a ball, and then uh, she said she left me. I was just kicking the ball, and then a guy come up to her and said, oh, is, this, is, that, your, is that your son? Mom was like, yeah, why? And he was like, how old is he? Mom was like, he's two. So the guy was like, nah. <laughs> two years old, like, kicking the ball like that. That's was, crazy. Obviously, single parent mom's like, yeah. well, I don't know, sort of thing. The, the guy said, I've never seen anything like it. Like, a, a two-year-old kicking the ball, like how he is. Like, that's, that's amazing. But then mom's like, I don't know, maybe it's just normal. Yeah. And that was it. You never know. Cause like, player said the other day, that it's the easiest thing to do is like kick. Yeah. You know I'm like, my nephew, he's got good technique. Yeah. He's seven now. I was like, oh, like let's, let's do football. Yeah, keep giving him the ball. Yeah. But my sister's like, nah, my sister loves basketball. So now he's playing basketball. Oh, really? And he's a joke. Really? Like at eight. And he's like crossovers, like free throws, all of that stuff. He can do all of that. Wow. Like he's playing what, under... 12s now because it's all, everything else is too easy for him so That's you never know yeah you never know you never know man. <laughs> so let's talk about your f- famous first local club that everyone else played for as well Simrab Simrab yeah you know what it was you see when I played for Simrab when I was I think I was 8 9 and you see when I, when I look back now I saw a video recently actually <laughs> one of my goals like, it, was, it was just it was crazy <laughs> watching it but when I look at Simrab when I look back now we had like it didn't even feel like a like my first team or like a Sunday league team. Yeah. It was like it was like proper professional. It was like eight and nine. We had I had my name at the back of the shirt. No all way. The other, all the other kids at half time they'd have like oranges. That's just standard. Everyone knows that, right? We'd have bananas, <laughs> right? So it was just like we were so different to yeah. everyone else. We won we won everything. We had all the best players. Me and <laughs> scored obviously loads of goals. Oh, yeah. That yeah. must have been great. Cause like two sh- shorter strikers, tiny. Problems. I think I'm small now, tiny. <laughs> but like it was just, it was just like every game, every game, and even and even then, I'd play games where I score two or three. Then it, say like if I miss one, I'll, I'll be thinking I sp- I'll talk to my mum about it. Like, yeah, it's good, but I should have scored four or I should have scored five. Mm. And and I was like that from Simrab when I played for my school team, my district. Just like, yeah, obs- just obsess. Go home after training, just sit in my room and just watch. Strikers watch right his DVD. See, see, I wish I had this mentality because again, there's me and my like close friend. We were close when we were younger. We had a little competition. Me and them up top had a little competition. That's good. And then laugh about it after. As soon as football's done, we're mm. outside doing a madness. Yeah, yeah. But then at football, we're at football competing again. Yeah, yeah. And it's like I wish we, I wish either of us had that dedication because only like one of us went on to make it. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. whole team, and we were pretty decent, but it's just. Flick of the yeah, coin, I, really, I, isn't I, it? Yeah, I know. I think you. I think you need that dedication. I think it come from. It, I won't say. All my, obviously, my mum obviously stressed the importance of like working hard, and you have to work hard. Then the person next to you, and like you have to be good in school. All the all the stuff yeah, that your parents yeah, yeah. teach you. But I think because I loved it so much, that's why I did what I did, and that's why for me I was never satisfied. It like like I said, even if I scored two or three, I always thought. I need to score more, you know, finish training. Nah, I need to do a little bit more. I'd practice with both feet. Like, I'm talking about when I was really young. Because I thought, okay, I'm right-footed. Probably I'm right-footed. That's my strong yeah, foot. Yeah. But 
I want to get to a situation where I don't even have to think. Like, I can just shoot with both feet the same. So, so all these things I used to think about from young. So, you see that? You've mentioned your mum a few times now. Was she the driving force? Because a good, good friend of mine, his mum was literally pushing him to go ball. His dad done his bit as well. His dad yeah. was always about, but his mum, I'm going to big her up Val. Val. Shout out to Val. Yeah. <laughs> um, Come on, Val. Was your mum the same? Mm. Like, did so, she understand like what yeah, could happen? Yeah, she knew. <laughs> I don't think she understood what obviously comes with it. Yeah, okay. But it's just one of those ones. I think the love and that, okay, if you're telling me that you love football so much and I can see, then I'll just support you. I'll just push you as much as I can. Um, and obviously I had support from my mum, my nan and granddad, obviously to get my boots, shin pole, all the stuff I needed. Um, and I think that was it. But she always used to push me. Like, I remember times where like I mentioned before, I'd want to do certain things and that, but my mum was strict, you know, <laughs> like literally even like the summer was all right because it, when it's like <laughs> nine o'clock, it's still light outside. But like yeah. we lived, at, when, when we moved, I remember we moved from Canning Town to Beckton. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I lived on an estate. In the middle of the estate, there was like a pitch. So she could see me. I remember all the time, a certain time she'd be calling me. I'd be like, oh my God, man, that, <laughs> she called me in for everyone else is staying out. You're calling me to come yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. But like, this was like, and I, I just listened to be fair. I wasn't one of those kids that didn't want to listen. I'd always listen yeah, and yeah. I'd think, do you know what? Because it was me and my mum from when I was like two, like okay, single okay. parent. Then when I got to like 12, 13, 14, because we were so close, I just always listened. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because we always had, we had that relationship. I could tell my mum anything, like anything. I just speak to my mum. Any problems I had, she said that from day one, any problems you have, come talk to me, I'm your mum. No problem, I'll never judge you. Like, okay, cool, no problems. So I could speak to my mum about anything. So that's the sort of like relationship that we had. So because of that respect, I think I just listened. I thought, okay, cool. And she just pushed me. Like, she told me when certain games, when she, like, I could have done better, she would tell me. <laughs> I'd get upset. <laughs> you know when you get like, yeah, I'd get course, upset yeah, and like, stuff You like, thought you'd done your thing. Yeah, because yeah. I knew it, yeah. But, but then I'd, I'd think, okay, but once I've calmed down, I'd be like, nah, she's right, actually. She cares, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, she was strict, man. Like, never, I wasn't a kid that used to sort of like roam the streets. Like, I'd be out with my friends. Play a little bit, not Dan Ginger and all that. <laughs> do you remember that? As you do, yeah. As you yeah. do, yeah, yeah. Play football and that, and then that was it. And then I'll just go home and just and just chill. But I enjoyed being at home. Yeah, yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? I enjoyed being in the house and in my room, listening to music, chilling, watching different DVDs or videotapes. Um, okay. Kids don't even know about videotapes now because you've got <laughs> iPhones and iPads yeah, no, and even, all that. They, even DVDs are. DVDs. Yeah. I had the telly, the blue telly, <laughs> and it had the, the video thing in with the telly. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So... That's a Christmas present to Yeah, so, but, so that, that's, that's it really. But she was straight, but she, she used to say, one day you'll thank me. I remember that. She always used to say that to me. One day you'll thank me. I'd be like, one day I'll thank you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But yeah. then as you get older. You understand that. Yeah, it? because cause I had so much energy as a kid. So I can imagine if I didn't have that, then I probably would have been on the streets doing yeah, stuff. Course, Do you know what yeah. I mean? Because you're not, you still got stuff to burn. You're not yeah, bored. Yeah, you know I, was like, I, had so, I had so much energy and stuff like that. Even after training up, I just like, could never sort of like rest. But yeah, she'll say, one day you'll thank me. For being, for being like how I am, you'll thank me one day. So yeah. You see that my mum was strict as well. So we had youth club every day except for Wednesdays. Nine o'clock it finished. You're home. Yeah, I'm you're like, home. I'm like, all right, cool. Because all your other friends, they're not going home. They're not going home. But no. my house was in the middle of the estate. Yeah. Like a block in the middle of the estate. So everyone's hanging out outside my bedroom window. And you can hear it. So I'm hearing everything, hanging out the window. I was like, close the window, all of that. And then when she passed, my dad moved in. He wasn't strict. I saw him every weekend. Yeah. And then that's when I took a turn. Yeah. And I'm like, but now me and my dad took a And the funny life. thing is, like, when your mum was around, you wanted to do all of that. Then you actually realise that actually, <laughs> I wish I weren't doing it. Yeah. Because then it's so easy for young kids. You could be a good kid. And then someone will say to you, okay, let's just go and do this. And all of a sudden, you just get sucked into something where, do you know what I mean? I've, I've seen it so many times where you get good kids and yeah. they just get sucked into certain things. And then just, it will just change their life. One, 100%. One moment. 100%. That's what like, I do. I see it at work every day. I'm like, you lot come from like good, good. I say good stock. Like you're coming yeah, from good like stock. Yeah. two parent homes, good yeah. jobs. You yeah, get yeah, anything on. And then you yeah. do one bad thing and it's and like, that's it. But so yeah. I see it as a learning curve. I say to parents today, like, I know it's worrying, but I see it as a learning curve because for me, I had to make the mistakes to realize. You know what I'm saying? Some yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. They don't realize that. Yeah, though. they need that trigger. They keep making the same mistakes before it's too late and that. But I think once you. Like you said, trigger, when it triggers and that, and you think, you know what, actually, I've had enough now because 
you don't want to let your parents down. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean, when they've worked so hard and stuff like that, and you don't want to let them down, and and but a lot of people don't realise though that's mm. the problem. Yeah, but and another thing a lot of people don't realise is there's second chances. Like you can mess up as a kid and then go out and still get a decent earn um, well. Do you know what I'm saying? But mm. it's just down to not even education. It's just down to like people. You need people like that come from good the people around you. Could, yeah, even, like even like people you can look up to. A lot yeah. of people don't have that. Do you no. know what I'm saying? So. But anyway, yeah, let's go back to football. What was your first academy team? Um, so I was at, obviously, like I mentioned, but I was at Lillyshaw mm. for two years, got a scholarship. While I was at Lillyshaw, I played for Charlton. Um, How was that coming over to the south side from east? It was weird, like that, but, this is, <laughs> but this is what I'm saying to people. Like, people think that like, you've got London, you've got South London. When you're from East London, you're a kid, you don't go anywhere else. Yeah. So when I'm going through Blackwall Tunnel, <laughs> thinking, raw, <laughs> this tunnel's long. Like, when am I going through that sort of thing? Do you know what I mean? But, at the time, Charlton, obviously, they had Paul Koncheski, they had Scott Parker that came through the first team, going to the first team quite early. So it was a good club to start off with. Um, but I just think for my mum, it was just like hour and a half there, hour and a half back. Then obviously, that's when I, when I got the opportunity to sign for West Ham um, from Lillyshaw when I was 16. It was just perfect because they just won the FA Youth Cup. In terms of young players, that was the club to be yeah, at. Yeah. And where you're going to get an opportunity with Harry Renap, the manager who's from the East, anyone understands, um, closer to home. We're trained in Chadwell Heath, so I can just get on the bus. Oh, yeah, decent, yeah, so it's yeah. perfect for me. And I'm playing with a lot of, lot of the, the boys I played with from my district and you know, from my school. So a lot of my friends. <laughs> so it just ticks every box. I thought, okay, yeah. yeah. Obviously, the chant weren't happy, but West Ham youth team days was just like the best. What's that, the Joe Coles and all of that? Joey was older than me. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Michael Harris was older. Um, Obviously, Rio and Frank came through, then Joe Cole, Michael Carrick, then me, then Glenn Johnson underneath. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So they then had Noble. a good little... But it was just, I remember just like, when I first signed, because I just left school, signed for West Ham. I remember when I signed, it was, I signed for like, it was, it was crazy because I had to go to like a tribunal. Because they paid, didn't it? Yeah, they paid like <laughs> 1.6 million. For... Wait, 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 wait. Stop, stop, stop. You're six, you've just left school yeah. and you're worth 1.6 mil. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. But when I look at it now, I'm like, that's mad. That's but when I look, when I sit here now and look at it, like it's a lot of pressure. I'm not, I'm not even kicked the ball yet. There's potential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of hype around me at this time because Lily Shaw and all that sort of stuff. But at the same time, it's like, that's a gamble. Because if, if I'm a businessman, <laughs> and for instance, in any industry, and someone says to me, ah, oh, because Harry said, this young kid, Jermaine Defoe, go and get him. And then someone says, okay, you've got to pay 1.6 million for this young kid with like, that's got potential. Yeah, yeah. There's no guarantees. <laughs> like, that's a lot of money. But I didn't, I didn't, Think about it. For me, I was just, uh, cool, just go there and just score goals. I just go there and just do what I do. I don't really, I'm not bothered about that. But then when I went to the tribunal and I'm sitting in a room with all these businessmen, <laughs> I'm sitting there, I don't even know what tribunal, I never even heard of that in my life. And just that resilience and that, I just got on with it. Just didn't care. Just like, okay, cool. I know how good I am. Sick. I'm going to go to West Ham and, and get in the first team and just show people how good I am. I just wanted to play in the Premier League. That was it. So I didn't even think about the, the, the price tag. That's mad though. Back then only recently, well. only recently, like um, I saw something recently, like a clip and, and, I, and someone was talking about it and I was like, that's mad. <laughs> but I'm glad I didn't think that way then. Because yeah. then sort of like, if you're thinking about the pressure, then going into games, like, it, it, would, it, it would be too much for me to handle. But I was just like, I just, yeah, it's fine. Just go there, just enjoy football. I didn't even, I didn't care. Was there ever a time you felt the pressure, like you saw like bid come in and you're like, shit, like someone never. really wants me for that type of money. Never. No? No. Never. How, how come that? Like, how come you're just so... Because I work too hard. I just, I work too hard. It's, not, <laughs> it's nothing changes. Whether I score goals here or I go to wherever it is, not for me, nothing changes. Like, I just think if you're, if, if, if you go and you bring your best, like the best version of yourself, then what have I got, what have I got to worry about? Like, that was it. So I never really, you get anxious and stuff. Yeah. Because I'm human. Of course you get anxious and that because, only because I want to do well, you get a little bit of nerves and that, but I was never one to sort of like be like, nah, this is too much for me. Never. Fair play. Fair no, play. never. And I guess you took that into your first loan, Bournemouth. Yeah. You scored in 10 games consecutively. Yeah. Not a lot of young kids can do that. No, I don't even know how I've done that. <laughs> what, what was it like going out? Obviously you've been to Lily Shore. But it was mad. It was crazy because remember, I, I, I came from Lillyshaw. Everything happened so quick for me. So I came okay. from Lillyshaw with potential, blah, blah, blah. And then I made my debut for West Ham, 17. 
remember in, in, it was a cup game and there was a few injuries Harry said are you in the squad tomorrow <laughs> and it, I'm, I'm glad that I, it was a day before the game they told me okay yeah because yeah. if it was a lead up to the game like a full week then you're overthinking and, yeah, yeah I hate thinking I just like just throw me in the deep end and I'll just get it done and uh, I remember sitting on the bench and I think please let me come on <laughs> please and I come on and with my second touch I scored better I was 17 better so then the next day Harry pulled me in and said you know what I don't want you playing like reserve football He's got on loan and then played league football. Um, it's like effectively men's football then, men's isn't it? Football. Because and that's exactly what it was. Because even if I made my debut at West Ham when I was 17, well, like, I was on the pitch for six minutes. <laughs> Still bad. But when I went to Bournemouth, right? I remember driving to Bournemouth on loan and I was sort of like on the motorway going to Bournemouth. I'm thinking, Bournemouth. I, I, in my mind, I thought, boss, where's that? <laughs> Bournemouth's only, now, Bournemouth's two hours down the road, <laughs> south coast and that. Yeah, but yeah. When you're in the car as a young kid and that, Feels like you're driving forever. Of course, yeah. I got to Bournemouth. I remember, uh, I checked into a hotel. Just felt like a man. Like I was, I just turned 18, and I went to training. And I was only meant to be there for a month. Because when they phoned Harry, they said, oh, "Have you got a centre forward for us?" So obviously, we have got the young kid Defoe that just made his debut. Yeah. Blood joined him. Too small. They said, "Nah, he's too small. We can't play in this league." <laughs> They'll just smash him all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Harry goes, "No, no, no. Let him go down for a few weeks and that, and then you'll see." Yeah, yeah. All right, Harry. Okay, cool. <laughs> We trained and we played a game. I think I scored about five. They phoned Harry back and said, oh, can we keep him for the rest of the season, <laughs> right? Better. <laughs> Harry tells his story all the time and that. I didn't even know. He told me the story. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then that was it. And then I, there was a player there called Narada, who I was really close to. Um, Chucky, Big Fletch, who was the centre forward. Jason Tindall, who's Eddie Howe's assistant. Okay, yeah, yeah. Actually, okay, I, yeah. And I, his dad actually scouted me for West Ham. <laughs> so there's a few people there who I knew, which was nice. But at the same time, walking into the changing rooms, 18, on loan, to, like when you're playing with men, I'm talking about, like, I'm a kid, I'm at home with my mum, and there's guys that got mortgages, <laughs> and kids and that, do you know what I mean? So it's just like, you walk into the change rooms, and it's like, wow, this is different to youth football. Even if I train with the West Ham first team every day, but this is different. Yeah. And I remember, away game, the first game was against Stoke. Oh, and bad place I remember, to go. <laughs> I remember, day before the game, I just loved the whole environment of it, travelling on a coach, all that sort of stuff. I just loved it. And then, I'm on a coach, got to the hotel, checked in the hotel, they give you your room keys, drop your bags off to come down for the meal. So I'm looking for my key. So I said to the, I said to the room at the reception, I was like, ah, oh, like, my key's not there. She goes, oh, that's strange, I put your key out. So I'm looking for my key, but I can see, like, I don't know how, how I even fell for it. <laughs> the players, I can see everyone sort of like chuckling and that. So I'm thinking, so I'm so naive to it. Yeah. Anyway, they've given me a room key. I've got to my room. <laughs> oh my God. I've opened the door, the mattress is in front of me. <laughs> so the mattress is looking at me, I'm thinking, what? Obviously, it's the yeah, wrong, yeah, it's the yeah, wrong yeah. room because yeah. this room's smashed up. Like, it's the wrong, there's a wedding yesterday, there's a wrong. <laughs> so, all the boys walking past my room, going to dinner, they're laughing. What are you laughing at? They're like, get used to it, my friend. New sign ins, that's what happens. Oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah. basically, they got my key, went to my room, smashed up my room. So, then you've got to put the mattress on, <laughs> make a bed, all that sort of Zaka. Like Initiation. Yeah, yeah, initiation. That's what they do. I just sort of like laughed about it. And I thought, okay, cool, no problem. I look forward to the new signing because I can be involved in. <laughs> uh, and then you go down for dinner and that. And then we played against Stoke. I scored. Better. A header. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it was just like... and Gone then from after, too little to score an header. Yeah, and then I went into the next game. Confidence scored in the next game. The next game. The next game. When it got to the eighth or ninth game, I'm like, I'm confident. Like to like, in, like feel so, like just, feel like the easiest thing in the world. Yeah. And then I remember putting on Sky Sports News and they started talking about, they're showing my goals and they're talking about records and stuff. If he scores in 10 consecutive games, he's broken this record. And I thought, oh, do you know what? I don't need this because <laughs> then it was like, then it was on my mind. Yeah. So they came down, they started doing all these t-shirts. <laughs> We've got Jermaine Defoe scored 10 in a row. But I think they had it before I'd done it. And all the fans used to sing it and stuff. And then I remember I got played a month a few times and uh, they'll come down and I'd walk on a beach. They would have, so it was just like a lot. Because remember, I'm only going there to go on loan, yeah, to play yeah. some football, to hopefully get back to West Ham. And then, because I've scored in so many games, then they're talking about this record. And I remember going into the 10th game, everyone's talking about it. So I was so desperate to do it, because it's on Sky Sports News. I was so desperate to do it. I remember in the game, I had a chance early and I missed. Bro, I nearly started crying on the pitch. No way. Because I thought, nah, I need to do it. Because everyone's talking, about, I, yeah. have to, I have to score in this game. Because <laughs> if I don't score in this game, I've done all of that for what? And I remember, like, I got the chance, and I remember I took it around the goalkeeper, and I, and, I, and I scored. 
And it was just like, wow. Better. Yeah. But you know what it's like when you're playing and the next game comes around so quick and I'm on a roll. Yeah. So I'm not even thinking. I'm just playing goal. Bang, bang, bang. It was just like, I had rhythm. And I think once, once I get that, it's just, it's just the best feeling. Do you know, that makes sense to like your goal scoring record as a senior player because you just, once you scored one, two, then you went and scored yeah. a few more. Got yeah, just once, so, you yeah. Get, once you get rhythm and you're confident, like, like I said, it just seems like the easiest thing in the world. You don't even think. Everything, all my finishes was just instinctive. Didn't even look, just like touch, bang, touch light. How did you handle when the goals dried up? Do you know what I said? Do you know what? It was tough for me because obviously like everyone knows I love scoring goals and that's like, there was times where, say like I come back from an injury and then like, you just know when you're off it. Do you okay, I mean? You okay. miss a chance and stuff like that. And I, and I try and be positive, but it, it used to affect me because I'd go home and I'd be thinking about it. Like I'd be thinking, do you know how bad it is, right? Go on. Say how bad it is, right? Even like recently, I'll go back to the story. But even like recently, we played soccer aid. Yeah. <laughs> so I was messing about in training because it's not serious. I scored this unbelievable goal in training. And I remember everyone was around the side watching. I missed a chance. And I was, talk, and I, and I was driving my car the other day and I, and I thought about it. No way. And I had to snap out of it. So at least just relax <laughs> because this is training and it's thing. But then I'll, then I'll laugh about it. But this, that's the sort of person I am. Like if I miss, if I miss the chance, like, I wouldn't even want to watch Match of the Day because I think, ah, oh, if I watch Match of the Day and they show that chance, it's just going to piss me off even more. But then I'll be thinking, I can't wait till Monday morning because I need to go back and practice yeah, more. Yeah, of course, of course. But like, um, yeah, so when the goals dried up, it was tough. But at the same time, I'd, I'd always remain positive. I'd stay behind, I'd do more finishing or I'd go on YouTube and I'd just watch like loads of my goals. Like, I'd watch loads of my goals and I'd be like, well, obviously there's nothing to worry about because I know I, know I can, you do, can it, do it. Yeah, yeah. But just try and... Sometimes I'd overthink, take an extra touch, but it's, I think it's just normal. But I think once you know that, like, listen, the best players in the world go through periods when they've not scored. But um, I think for me, I used to watch the videos or just go on YouTube, just watch loads of my goals, going into games. No, oh, decent, decent. Why did Harry take to you so much? It's like he took you more or less everywhere. Yeah, like, it was just like a thing in the change rooms. If there was a problem, the players used to say, oh, JD, go and talk to your dad. <laughs> no way. Yeah, it was, it was just weird because obviously he signed me when I was 16. You know what it was with Harry Redknapp? Like, he was the boy from the East End, played for West Ham, managed West Ham, become this amazing manager. Everyone loves Harry. And I think it was just like, I don't know, he just loved me from like, he heard about me, sent scouts out to watch me, said, right, yeah, we want him. And then from that first day I walked into the training ground, just the love that I got from him. Forget about the football stuff, just how he was with me, like the man managing. Yeah, yeah. As a young kid, I was 16 every day training with the first team, every single day. He could have just left me in the under 19s. Now I want him over here because he, he wanted to develop me, give me that confidence because he saw something. I remember one day we trained and then I remember I scored a goal in training and I'm like 16. And then he said to the first team players, he was like, that's how you finish. So I was like, wow. <laughs> do you know what I mean, when a when first team manager says that to a 16 year old kid, like, what does that do? Do you know what I mean? So it was just clever. Not decent. No wonder they call him your dad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like my dad, Harry. I, was, I bumped into him recently, actually. It's so funny when I see him, like, amazing, love him. But it was just, he just gave, he always got the best out of me. Okay. Because I, did, I didn't want to let him down. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember when I got injured and just little things. So after the World Cup, I got injured, like a bad injury, and we just qualified for the Champions League. And he, he knew that it would hurt me because all that hard work the season before to get there and then missing all the group stages. I remember I turned up at the training ground, I had an operation on my ankle. I came to the training ground on my crutches and he looked at me, he was like, what are you doing here? I said, I'll just come in obviously to be around, see the boys and, yeah. and the doctor and stuff like that, the physios. He was like, no, no, no. He said, book a flight to Dubai, don't want to see you for like two weeks. No way. Or 10 days, go to Dubai. <laughs> so really? Yeah, yeah, go to Dubai, don't want to see you, go and switch off. I was like, okay. Just like little things. Fair enough. Yeah, it was just like, it was, it was proper. What, what was it like? Him being Frank Lampard's uncle, and then Frank Lampard's dad being it. Did, that, did he get stick as well? Frank got a lot of stick. Okay. But to be fair, he backed up his talk, innit? Yeah, but at the beginning, he got a lot of stick. He's too big. He's not good enough. You're only playing because you're dad and your uncle. Wow. And then Frank Lampard, I used to watch him. After training, go into the, the indoor hall. He used to put like running spikes on. And he'd do these like little shuttles, like little doggies every single day behind the cameras. No one sees this stuff. And started scoring goals. And after that, unbelievable. But the work that he put in, 
because he had to, because he was hurt, because yeah, all the fans yeah. used to like. And Harry backed him in, in a press conference. They were coming for him. There was, it was like a press conference, but there was like fans and the fans were coming for him. And Harry just like basically just basically told everyone, shut up now. Nah. I think I remember that. I think yeah. it's like an old clip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's Do what Harry's have... like. Just listen, they, these are my boys. I protect them. Fair enough. Do you know what? I coached Harry's grandson, Jamie's son, Did Bo, you? yeah. Oh, Bo. Tech. Really? The technique is unreal. Yeah, but his dad, his dad was like. No, nah, this is no, like he's doing things. They shouldn't be doing that. his nah, age. No, like little grass cutters, like. Kind of grass, bang. all of that, like all of everything, really? and it bends. And it's just like, right, if he carries on, if he carries if he can, on, then if he can get the legs up and down, he's gone. Like, but his technique is a joke. Because Jamie was just like, Jamie's passing. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. That- Jamie, Jamie had that pass. Because when I played with Jamie, that his knees, to be fair, he had, his <laughs> knees were gone, to be fair. And he used to work so hard on that. But, but his Liverpool days, Jamie's like passing. And obviously, Lamps, Frank was just like a goal scoring machine. Frank, Frank finished, finished like a forward. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because all these midfielders now, you, you, you think now how the game is now, right? You get a holding midfielder going for 100 million. <laughs> but then you get someone like a Frank Lampard that will score you 20 goals for six consecutive seasons. So how much, was he, how much is he going for then? Priceless, like now, isn't it? Yeah. It's priceless. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If you get a holding midfielder. That's crazy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, but mm. I, I, just, I just charge it to the game, innit? Like, what, what, as fans, there's nothing we can do and there's nothing that clubs can do except for pay yeah. that money, innit? You have to pay the money. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. All right. Back to... So you've got your... You're back in the West, um, West Ham team. Yeah. I see something where the day they got relegated, you put in a transfer request. Yeah, day after. Day after. <laughs> Bro. Why? That's the, you know, that's, when people say, do you, what's the one thing that you regret in your career? So, yeah, the, the transfer request. Because my agent at the time, and I've, I've said it, I've sold this, this story so many times. My agent at the time said to me, you need to put in a transfer request because you have to be playing the Premier League if you want to play for England, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, the club's been relegated. Um, I think you should do that. So I, me being naive, I just thought that's normal. Trusted my agent. Took the transfer request to West Ham uh, on my own. Remember, I'm only like 20 at the time. Still, I'm still young. And, uh, and, but you know when you're doing something, but you know it's, a, it's, it's not right. I yeah. was so scared. Like, last time I was scared like that. Probably when my mum calls me or something like that. <laughs> but calls me my full name, Jermaine, yeah, yeah. not Jem. Do you know what I mean? So you know you've done something wrong. But, and I remember getting, again, I sat up to Park. Remember, this is the club that gave me a chance when yeah, I was of course. And it's your local. So much love from like my local team, a lot of my family are West Ham fans, but I just felt like it was the right thing because my agent said, do it. So I, this is normal. Got really get yesterday. <laughs> Didn't even let it marinate. Like. The next day, marinate, bro. The next day, I was on the front page of the Sun with my my face on a rack. No way. Front page of the Sun newspaper, and it was my face and a rack. And this was like for weeks. Uh, I got abused. The backlash here was mad. Can imagine. Like, if I wasn't strong mentally, like <clears throat> it was tough. And remember, I was still playing for West Ham after games and that because fans remember it takes a lot when you do that because if, if I'm a fan and a young player does that I'll be the same yeah, who do you think yeah, he is yeah, yeah. What, you don't want to be here like who do you think you are that sort of thing do you know what I mean so I understand it but it was the hardest thing and I thought right well how am I gonna how am I gonna turn this around and I just thought just, just play football because when I'm playing football I don't think about anything yeah, else yeah, yeah. and then once that whistle goes then it's like reality like oh we have to do it but once I'm playing I don't think about anything else I scored a lot of goals before I, I went, to, went to Tottenham, but that was the biggest regret, man. I wish I'd never done that. Because even now, there's this thing, what do they used to sing? When we play against West Ham, they used to sing, you're just a small poor ints. Remember Incy? <laughs> they used to abuse me. And then I used to be playing, no way. but I used to like it. <laughs> they used to abuse me, West Ham fans, but I used to like it because it used to get me going. Um, but then it was still that little part of me that thought, this is sad because, do you know what I mean? Like, I play for the club, like, so. And that whole, I feel like that whole rivalry, like, West Ham, Chelsea, Tottenham. Yeah. They don't really get no. on it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and you go into another rival club. Yeah. But your career. Yeah, I know. But like, it was just like, it was tough, man. Because I think I was the only player to hand in the transfer request, to be fair. And a lot of the boys left anyway. Yeah, but they... And I just felt like, um, you know, I think if a club wants you, they'll come and get you. You don't need to say to the club, you're right, oh, I want to leave. Especially when you're young. But yeah, since then, my agent, man, he's, I don't know where he is. He's just, he's hiding somewhere. <laughs> he Hopefully one day we'll come out and speak to him. 
Because he was out. a young agent at the time. Okay, okay. In a big but agency. Maybe he didn't know, innit? Or maybe he was advised yeah, to but say. When was a, lot of them, a lot of them, it's like a cash thing, yeah? So yeah. they've Four, got it as well. Yeah, 20 years ago that was. So That's mad. If he wants to come out and say anything, then I, I don't mind. Because <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the truth, to be fair. Gone for six mil. <laughs> Does that affect you, the price? I think it was about nine, you know? All in all, we're like, nah. I didn't care about, when I signed for Tottenham, bro, I didn't even, I remember my agent doing the deal and wages, I didn't care. I would have said about, you're obviously going to be on more money and I didn't care. <laughs> Serious? At the time, no, I, to play. Yeah, because for me, I, I just thought, if I'm doing well, the money's going to come anyway. But that, for me, that wasn't, that's not my love though. Like, I, I, I love football. Like, I play football now for nothing. I love football, I love scoring goals. You give me like, 100 million now, it, like, or, or score a goal what's going to give me the better feeling yeah. because this is when, I, when, when you're young and I say to my mum mom, mom, I want to be a footballer why because I love scoring goals I want to score goals in front of all these people I want to play for England not that I want to drive a Ferrari or I want money all that sort of stuff that was my motivation yeah. you know what I mean so when I signed for Tottenham I remember I just signed a contract like, when, it was like <laughs> the Ian Wright thing when he signed for Arsenal just where, where's the pen let me sign <laughs> what like negotiation I want this I want this I want yeah, this yeah 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 no, I'll score goals and then when it gets to the point where I'm more mature, blah, 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 then I can say, okay, then I've done this then. Because right. I went through all that stuff with West Ham. I think I was, there was so much hurt in me. I just wanted to, and like a fresh start and then score goals, get an England squad and then, and I was just, I was just, I was just happy then. Yeah, just get settled and just get, get settled in yeah. What was it like to step up? Was it like a massive step up? Because obviously like, the training ground now, bonkers. It's crazy. But back then, was it, much different. I'm glad, I'm glad I didn't. As a young kid, I'm, I'm happy. I didn't have a training ground like that. Because I've seen it. I've seen it. I've done a course. Imagine a young kid, just... yeah? Imagine, imagine, imagine you're a young kid and then you're going <laughs> to the Ivy every night for dinner. It's crazy. Like, and then, do you know what I mean? It's like, then when you get to like 25, 26, like, <laughs> going to the Ivy, okay? It's ain't good enough. Do you know what I mean? So, for me, the fact that we had portal cabins at West Ham, we had one decent pitch, which was in it was nice in in July pre-season. <laughs> Come January, it was just mud. So, and then you see the training grounds now. There's no mud on the pitch. It's like carpet. The player, your boots don't even. You know, back in the day, you have to yeah, knock clean, your boots. Yeah, and that. Yeah, you don't yeah. even do that now. To be fair, I went. I went there. I think I had some mud on my trainers. I walked across the pitch, and they were clean. Clean. It's like carpet. You can lay on it. Sleep. All right. Question. This is this is <laughs> this is our overall Crazy. question. So. The facilities you had when you in your prime yeah. weren't dead. Yeah. If you had the stuff that they've got now, mm. how far do you reckon you would have gone? I don't know, you know, because I don't know, because I know like obviously when you're younger, obviously they've got all the ice baths and they've got, they ain't just got ice baths, they've got like spas, yeah. ice bath, <laughs> jacuzzi, which is, which is amazing for the young players now. Um, plunge pool cryotherapy <laughs> and of course like you, you look at it and you think okay if you have that from young maybe it's too much but I think if you use it in the right way yeah, yeah. I think you know what I've got all this now if I use it in the right way then I can be the best player there's no excuses then of course what's the excuse there's no excuse you plan the best pitches you've got the best food not only that's the canteen by the change rooms you've got like a tuck shop where they give you protein shakes they give you supplements <laughs> they give you um snacks after training yeah. protein all that sort of stuff everything's been taken care of so if there's no excuse then it can be tough but but I'm just like I said I'm just glad that not that I'm glad I didn't have that because it would have been nice but at the same time it does make you hungry yeah do you know what I mean course, when you're like and you look forward to the game on the weekend with nice pitches and stuff like <laughs> that but the training ground like I said at West Ham it wasn't it wasn't the best but you know it was um, <laughs> it worked <laughs> sorry you mentioned Canteen, yeah. I'm an Arsenal fan, yeah. <laughs> Go on. What, did, did they ever get to the bottom of the whole poison, food poisoning scandal? Oh, when we played there. Uh, at West Ham. Oh, my God. Because now it's all making sense. You're back at West Ham. They didn't like you leaving. And I went to Tottenham. And you went to and Tottenham. And you have to play them to like big game you have to, to yeah. qualify for the Champions League. Ex and it's you know between you lot. We're on it. The Marriott. By the water. It was that hotel. Sometimes don't disclose where we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. But this ain't live, innit? If this was live TV, I'd yeah, be fair, like... Yeah, fair, fair, fair. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I bleep that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, true. So, <laughs> yes, anyway. You at the Marriott, yeah? So it was at the Marriott and, like, like I said, massive game between us and Arsenal. 
So I remember getting up in the morning, <laughs> the, doc- the doctors phoned my phone. So the doctors called me, JD, you're right. I said, what do you mean? Yeah, fine. <laughs> Why are you phoning? They were like, what's wrong, doc? He goes, oh, because a few of the boys is like, uh, a few of the boys are ill. I was like, really? Who? Because I'm so desperate to win. Like, it's against West Ham. I, I know that the whole stadium, <laughs> they're going to they're gonna abuse me. So boys, we need to be on it, yeah? Playing against Anton and all that lot. Yeah, all yeah, the boys. yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a proper game, London derby. So about, I think it was about five or six of the boys had food poisoning because they had that lasagna. <laughs> but I probably had, I, had, I probably had at, t- at that time, probably chicken and pasta or something or fish. Um, I was smart on that. But I said, nah, Doc, I'm fine, blah, blah, blah. But I think Michael Carrick, Jermaine Jennings, but they still played. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if JJ played, but I think Michael played. Nah, they both played. Yeah, struggled. Struggled, being sick all night. They, they struggled and that and then end up obviously losing. I remember I scored, but we end up losing and that. And it was just like the papers, like, you can imagine it was just still a field day and that. Like, but people always talk to me about that game. What happened? Was it conspiracy? <laughs> Were they putting the food? So I don't know, but. Someone definitely got sacked from West Ham. Yeah, yeah, it was just, yeah. Or the was, Marriott Hotel. Yeah, it was, it was mad. That's crazy. But yeah, back to Tottenham. I can say I'm an Arsenal fan. And one game that sticks in my head, yeah, I said North London Dark. I tried to go to as many as possible. I think I've been to like three. But I get the tickets. The four. I've been to three. Four, when three, you five, scored four. the four goals and you, and you lost 5 4. Oh, yeah. At White Hart Lane. Mm. Now, mind you, you've scored four goals and still lost. Yeah. Like, are you happy for scoring four goals? Or no, you, no, no, no. I didn't score four. No, sorry. The team scored four goals. Yeah. yeah. You scored, though. I scored one, yeah. Like, and it's one of my best goals I scored for Tottenham. Exactly, yeah, is it? yeah. I think like only Kane scored a better goal than that. You know when yeah. he cuts in and oh, unbelievable, it. Yeah, yeah, silly. Yeah. Like what's you're fuming? Yeah, you're fuming because <laughs> you can't lose that game. You can't lose. You can't score four goals at home and lose and lose and you lose against Arsenal. If it's one, you just can't lose that game. And but then, to be honest, it was probably the hardest team. Yeah, that Arsenal team was that I played. In my, when I look at all the teams in my career that I played against, like the Chelsea team with Macaulay, they come in. And then like, it was just like, it's impossible. That like, athlete, strong, leader, everything. It was, that team was the hardest team to play against. Perez, Thierry, Sol, Ash. Like, it, like <laughs> it, it was just like impossible. But then you think, you know what? We scored four goals, but then concede five at home. I mean, you can imagine what it was like. And, yeah. and, and, and use won the league that year. Exactly, yeah. The Invincibles. Yeah. So it was just like, <laughs> yeah, man. But, but again, football, that's why football, people think, oh, football's like, football's like this. One week, you're up there. The next week, you're down there. And it's just like, the ups and downs is crazy. But this and, is... and even when you're high, you can't get too high because oh, I've scored two goals today. I've got a game in two days. I can't get too high because yeah, yeah. then you play two days, you ain't scored. Then you've got to try, do you know what I mean? So it's just like up and down. You can't get too high, you can't get too low. And you know, saying that, it's not like you was at like, I'm not, I'm not even dissing the way Tottenham is. It's like you weren't at a team that was consistently at the top. Like, no. Was, Periods where you lot are fighting relegation or you're fighting for, for Europe and stuff. So it's just yeah. like you've got to like stay humble the whole time, innit? But it? the good thing is when I, when I signed for Tottenham, it was the, that transition period. Because before then, it was like um, the, that Gus Poyet, Jamie Redknapp, yeah, they were yeah. all finishing. Yeah. And then Marty Yo coming, and that's when we just went bang. They got loads of young players. So then for us, it was like, I think the worst season we had was probably finishing fifth. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. think, and then our six or something. So for us, it, like, we have to get in the Champions League. It's massive for the football club, financially, everything, for the fans. It's the elite competition. You have to get in the Champions League. It's finishing the top four. And uh, especially with the players that we had. But like, um, I don't know, it's just, when, when I speak to a lot of the boys now, we still believe that we could have done a lot more. I, Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm obliged to say you couldn't you know, because I'm an Arsenal fan. But Arsenal <laughs> said that to me. Yeah, but he's a nice guy. Yeah, he's a nice guy. So I also Arsenal said that. I'd just say you lot are just, just, just Tottenham, innit? Just but, yeah, time but, wasters, the, but it, it was that, the Invincibles. It was just Thierry. Yeah, but was even, just... even after, like, sorry, I'm in Arsenal hat mode, but yeah. Um, he's funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. What was so good about Tottenham? Like, what was it? Because, again, take my Arsenal hat off. You're, you weren't, player-wise, you weren't, the results and the positions didn't match up. You should have no, done a lot more in it. It didn't match up. It didn't match up. And because we had a, a lot of young players, amazing players, like even when Modric come, Modric, you've got Dembele, you've got Aaron Lennon, you've got Gareth Bell. Even Danny Rose left Danny, back. Danny yeah. Rose left back. Obviously, like me, Crouch, whoever it was, Pavichenko, <laughs> like, Robbie Keane, Berbatov. Look at that. All these top players and that. But 
And then they brought in like Edgar Davids, like senior players that knew how to win. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. People say it's a jinx. So I, I, I just don't know. Like if it was, you would get so close and then something would just happen. We just caught that final hurdle. Then we signed, then AVB come in, took over, moved into a new training ground. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah At yeah. one point in the season, I remember we played against Man City. We should have won. It was 2-2, should have won. And they were talking about us winning the league and I was flying, Gareth was flying and that. And then it's just, again, we lost oh against, my God. Then, then we lose to, to Liverpool, like got battered at home. Then we lost to City. Then obviously from being there, then we sort of like dipped and then just that final hurdle. Yeah. But like, but to be fair, it was just, some of the teams I played in there were just, uh, some of the players, Nico Cranchar, um, amazing footballers. That's mad. Tottenham players. Gareth Bell, you've mentioned it. I completely forgot. There was that jinx where he played left back and you lot didn't win for ages. Didn't win. And then you pushed up, pushed up and then turned into a beast. He is, a, yeah, a beast. He was just, you know, you talk about athlete. I remember we used to pre-season, we used to do this run. I used to hate it because my back used to go. <laughs> I remember we used to do this run here. Oh my God, I hated it. So it was like, there was a pole. This is around a pitch, pole, yeah. pole, pole. And you have to do it in two minutes. Rest. Two minutes, rest. Yeah. You don't run longer than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I would go first, two on a pole. So I would go first, get round, just get in. <laughs> and then Gareth would go and he'll take off and I'm watching. But you know when you watch someone run, he's gliding, long legs, arms, back, like. And I used to watch him, I think, nah. And then after train, I'd watch it, I used to watch him swim. But this guy's just an athlete. Yeah. And then he used to get the ball and he used to knock it past people. He didn't do tricks and stuff. He used to knock it past people and just run. And just it's, like. Yeah, and it's just, you couldn't yeah, catch him. You can't catch him. And I used to think, wow. And then he never used to play because Ben Wilson or Kotu played left back and then Benny went to African Nations and then yeah. Gareth got his chance because before then he was, he was meant to go on loan to Nottingham Forest. No way. He was meant to go on loan and then Gaz got his chance and like played one well a few games, got into Champions League, played against Inter Milan. Oi, and all see of a that sudden, game? <laughs> you play against Inter Milan and then you're seeing like a world-class performance, both legs. Because I got my ankles, so I was at home watching yeah. it. I think Micron just got into team of the year. And he absolutely and he ruined him. That was one of the best performances I've seen for a young kid to do that at the San Siro and at the lane. And after that, I thought, you know, they put a bid in after. Apparently. Oh, in it? The they said we wanted 40 million. <laughs> Just, I've never seen anything like it. A kid, a young kid, to do that to an experienced right back, it was scary. Like, That's, you see that? Yeah, you said he put a bid in. You see, when they're true or not, in your group chat, so you're like, like Bantering each other, like asking not like, what's really, going on. Not really. You come in training and that. I've had that before, and then everyone's like, oh, what's happening? You leave, what's, what's happening? Yeah. Players are so cool. <laughs> just like, I don't know. Like, agent story. Yeah, agent story. I don't even know. Is it, but I say, is it true? Is there some, is there been contact? Yeah. 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 I've, just, I've always said to the boys, you know what? Listen, if you want to go and it's better for your career, just do it. Top players, and they're just like, so I've been in positions loads of times, and players come up to me and said, oh, JD, what's happening? Yeah. I just told him straight. I said, yeah, like this was happened, blah, blah, blah. And I might be going. So that's it. Do you know what I mean? Enough, but, yeah. It's never just like group chat. And then it's just general check quickly. Is it true? Yeah. Okay, cool. Even managers, when Sam Allardyce was <laughs> linked with England job, again, all the boys were like, JD, go and talk to your dad. Everyone's scared to ask him. He's at Sunderland. Everyone's scared to say to the boss, boss, are you leaving? Yeah. I thought, do you know what? I'm just going to ask him straight. I said, boss, what's going on? You going to England? You, you get an England job? He was like, yeah. I said, who's coming in then? He said, I think David Moyes. I said, okay. I said, what's he like? He said, intense. I was like, okay, cool. He said, so it's obviously different to you then. And I was like, what do you know what I mean? And then I told the boys and that, but everyone's just honest, isn't it? Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Because I guess that's your family. Like, you see them every day, so why not, innit? At football, you become family. Yeah. And do you, know, do, you know, do you know the hardest part of football is when you're close with someone and they leave. That's tough. Like, because I've, I've been in change rooms before. Because a lot of times, you're not like, you become a family, but you wouldn't click with everyone. Yeah, yeah, There's of not, course, yeah. You know what I mean, I wouldn't like text all the boys when I'm on holiday <laughs> and stuff like that, but one or two that you'd be like, and it's always that like in the change rooms, like you see it during the day, like you come in after training and then say me and you are close and that, that so everyone's upstairs in the canteen having lunch, but I'd wait for you to finish yeah, a massage yeah, yeah, or I'd yeah, wait for you yeah. then we're going to go together or if you're getting a massage, I'll chill and I'll chat, like you always get that. You get strange dynamics. I remember Adebayor and Andros Townsend Weird. That is random. Them two, like, it was just weird. They <laughs> argued every day. But then if someone said, get a ball between two, you, get, you go with your friend. Yeah. And it was always th those two. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Like Chimbonda and Berbatov. <laughs> because they both don't, they used to run. They're so lazy. In training, 
Chimbon needs to get his hair braided. Yeah. Don't want to head the ball. In training. I said, bro, you're a defender. Because <laughs> you've got braids, you don't want to head your ball. Like, where you going? You've got a date tonight or something. You've got a date tonight, you don't want to head, like, <laughs> weird stuff. And then Berba didn't want to move in training. Has to be to his feet. Yeah, didn't want to move. So that those two funny. were together. And, it, it was um, your part. Are you, like, crouching it? Yeah, crouching that. But, like, uh, depends what club. But even, like, um, at Sunderland, I had Vito Maloney, the goalkeeper. Itali- Italian. He was at Arsenal. We to, yeah, he was at Arsenal. <laughs> so, like, but do you, know what, do, you know why, do you know why I got on with him? To the, like, because he was so serious and he was so focused. Like, <laughs> like he was just a serious guy. And I remember they took us to New York for like a like mid-season thing. Yeah, yeah. I was with him the whole trip, me and him. Decent. It just went everywhere together. And I was looking, thinking, JD and Vito, <laughs> like centre forward and like the Italian goalkeeper. Like it, was just, it was just weird, but we just clicked. And that's what it's like in football, to be fair. Probably getting ideas where, where to pull it yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it was funny, man. All right, cool. Harry comes knocking again, Portsmouth. Mm. Is it like, I have to go, or do you reckon your time at Tottenham was... No, do you know what it was? One day Ramos coming at Tottenham, and at this stage, I'm established. I've been there for years, scored a lot of goals. The fans loved me at Tottenham. Yeah. Then this manager comes in. Then I didn't believe it was the right man. I just didn't believe it was like, do you know what I mean? He come in, he used to have this, call it a fat club. I so, heard about so, this, yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> at the time, say I'm like five foot five, five foot six, body fat low, on the, probably, I don't know, 60 something kg, strong. Aaron Lennon again, right, fat club, Jermaine, Aaron, after training you have to just do these runs for like 10 minutes. No way. <laughs> you know what, you know what I mean? So I'm thinking, what? So that got my back up a little bit because yeah, so I yeah. thought, nah, what is, like, so we, we did him and, he's, and he didn't speak no English, so I'll speak to his other guy and Gus Poet was with him. I said, Gus, what's going on? Nah, the manager says, the, the, the lighter you are, the quicker you are. So, okay, I understand that, but at the same time, like, you can't say that me, Aaron and I need to like shred body fat come on do you know what I mean so done that and I remember one day we were training and I remember he said something to one of the players I haven't got one of the younger players I just lost it I was just like I said to one of the guys I said like why don't you say that to Berber why don't you say to yeah. why don't you say that to someone else why are you always saying it to the younger players he said to me what's your problem like you got what's your, what's your problem you got attitude like, I said no nah, I'm just telling you so after training they pulled me Oh, the manager wants to speak to you. Call no problem, manager trying to lay him. If you want to leave, you can leave, no problem. I said, okay, call no problem. I said, so you're telling me I can leave? Because you told us Spurs fans that and told Daniel Levy that. Yeah, you're no problem, you can leave if you want to leave. No problem. Got on the phone to my agent, Sky Andrews at the time. I said, Sky, because I was going into one year in my contract. Yeah, they put yeah. me under a lot of pressure to yeah. sign the contract, but the deal they were giving me at the time, I didn't believe. You know when you know your worth? Yeah, of course. I was in, I'm in the England squad, regular. Um, at the time, I didn't know what Berbatov was getting. I didn't know what for me it doesn't matter. Even if you're getting ten times more, it doesn't matter. I know, I know my worth yeah. enough, and I speak to other players in the English squad. So anyway, I spoke to Sky. I said, Sky, um, I had a meeting with the manager today, so I can leave. Why? He said, Really? Interesting. He said, Oh, I've had Daniel on the phone all day, and trying to sort out your deal. He said, No problem. He phoned Daniel Levy. Daniel's like, Nah, <laughs> what's going on? Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> like, he doesn't mean it. Blah blah blah. I said, No, the manager. That's what he said. So I'll leave. No problem. So the next day, went into training. Everyone's acting nice with me. Nice. Everyone's nice. Got cool. staff. Staff. Everyone's nice. Okay, cool. No problem. Match day, play against Derby. Walk into the change rooms. Look on. You know you get the shirts yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. And the captain, you get a captain's armband on the little tin. <laughs> they pull me on the side. Oh, you're captain today. <laughs> Bro, I wanted to scream. I said, I said, I'm captain. <laughs> so hold on a minute. So two days ago, you said I can leave. Oh, all of a sudden, what, did you get a phone call or something? Now, now you're captain. Oh, cool, no problem. Give me arm. I put the armband on. Captain, but then I laughed. I thought, this is, this is mad. Yeah. This guy, and that's what I thought, nah. So obviously, he's obviously said that to me. He just reacted and said that. Um, but the chairman, Daniel's the boss. Yeah. Right? And yeah, I was captain, captain the team. Didn't feel, didn't feel how it should have felt, but proud to captain the team because I love the club. Mm. The fans love me. I love the fans and all that sort of stuff. And after that, not too long after that, um, Harry throw me because I'm getting into one year of my contract I think the club got a little bit like can't go in the fridge you know I mean so yeah. can with it like and that wasn't my, my intention soul, man. Yeah, got... that worked, that, listen that wasn't my intention anyway I just wanted the right deal and then Harry throw me and said listen we spoke to, we've spoken to the club they've accepted a bid blah 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 do you want to come I said yeah I said I need to play football 
I said, I need to be happy again. I need to play. And plus, that Portsmouth team was unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it, and I, this was, and bro, this was, this, this was literally on a Sunday night. <laughs> and Harry said to me, drive down to, to, to Portsmouth. I drove down. He was so desperate to do it. I, I, drove, I drove down. I was excited in that. You know, normally we do a medical, right? People don't realize you do med- You have to go to two hospitals. Okay, I didn't know that. I didn't know. Bro, it's a whole day. Bloods, treadmill, um, heart, ECG, echo, um, two hospitals. I, I went there. I laid on the bed like this. The, the, the physio stretched my hamstrings. So that's your, your, yeah, you're fine. <laughs> You're fine. Yeah, don't need. Harry was like, no, 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 he's fine. Don't need a medical. He's fine. He's fit. You know, he's like old school. Jay, he's fit. Come on, come and play football. Come and score a goal. Went upstairs and uh, signed a contract. Benjani went to Man City. I signed a contract and then I played within two days against Chelsea. Made my debut. That's mad. That was it. He proper rated you, innit? Yeah, but he knew what he's getting. <laughs> yeah. Got your dad, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, you, spoke, you mentioned England. We so I spoke to a few players that played for played in the England team, and they say the divide north and south was a yeah. serious thing. Yeah, it was. Really, like I would say, it was like you know what I think. For me, it wasn't so much north and south. It was United boys would be together, and then you get like, um, like the Chelsea boys, and but everyone was cool though. Everyone was cool. Uh, but I think, like the Liverpool lads, and I think that rivalry, when you, you, you watching the Champions League games, the Liverpool and, and the Chelsea games, yeah. and I don't know, <laughs> Arsenal, Tottenham, sometimes, I don't, know, I don't know if it was hard to sort of like put that to the side. Yeah. When you meet up with England. Yeah. Because everyone's so competitive, do you know what I mean? So I just don't know. It's not, as, it's not how it is now. Because now everyone's like friends. A, everyone's friends. Like, <laughs> it's, like, it's like a club environment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, literally. Do you know what I mean? You saw the, the social media stuff. They're all friends. That like they will meet up outside of football. It's not like that. It wasn't like that. It wasn't like that. It was completely different. And I don't know, was it a bad thing? I'm, I'm not too sure. But the boys were just, just that competitive side of the, the players, like with the United boys and that. But I don't know. But though, I, I, I just loved it. You know, just being amongst the best players. You know, I enjoyed every training session. I, like, I loved all the meetups. Um, the games, like listen, it's it's the best, it's the best thing ever. Yeah, can't even really explain it. Representing your country is the best thing. That's all I wanted to do. And once I had a taste of it, I thought, no, I need to stay here. I, thought, I need to stay here. I'm not moving. Better. And then, and then, and that was it. So, you know, now it's it's just so different. Because when I'm watching, I'm like, they're so mad. Like <laughs> it's like they forget about all the clubs they play for. <laughs> it's like a little family. Yeah. That. But back then, nah. Because even obviously it's with social media now. Like you see in the dugout, in the cha- in the tunnel, yeah, you yeah, see yeah. them like just chatting, like just chatting, messing about, like like you said, on the outside they meet up, the players and that, and then it's just different. And maybe it's just how it is now. Different times, like obviously you mentioned the social media and a lot of stuff that the players are doing now, in terms of the social media, at St George's Park, you play all these different games and stuff, <laughs> don't they? Right then you're, you're gonna knock on Gary Neville's door or Sol Campbell, or yeah, lads, do you wanna go into the into the indoor hall and do a little bit for the socials and stuff like that. No nah. Because you know, back then it was just different characters. Yeah, exactly. It was just, it was different characters. And because remember, it was strange for me because you talk about that era that I played in. And remember, I got back into the English school when I was 34. Yeah, yeah. With these players. <laughs> and I remember going into the squad, right? I ain't going to mention no names, but I remember going to the squad and I, I say it like this. When I was, when I was in the English squad years ago, it was like men. Do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, leaders. Yeah, yeah. There's loads of that soul like David James. Gary Neville, Neville back was, all that yeah, lot. Yeah. Remember, I got back in the squad and then they used to play this game, some of the nights. And if you lost, the forfeit was, so the forfeit is like basically that like you have to go on, um, so the forfeit, so basically you have to pretend you're a dog on the floor <laughs> and I'll feed you the dinner and then just mad stuff, like basically, like, do you know what I mean? It's like, if I beat you, I can do whatever, yeah? Cool, no problem. <laughs> I remember sitting there, seeing these things, I'm like, where am I sitting? Wait, wait. Like, so, this generation is mad. Do you know who's done that? Sterling done it to Zinchenko. They played FIFA and he lost and he had to call into the well, team yeah, meeting. Yeah, right, was, that's right here. Yeah. I was mentioning Raz done it, yeah. So, so, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, so sorry. the forfeit is like, so if I beat you, I say, okay, this is what you've got to do. I'm going to go and get you, tell me what you want to eat and I'm going to feed it to you and you have to, like a dog, and then you have to eat at, at, at the bowl and you, can't, and, and you can't stop until I tell you to. No, I'm sorry, I'm not doing but that. But you know this before you play. Yeah, but I'm not doing that. 
I'm sorry. No, you have to. I'm sorry. Nah, you're not. That's no, not good I'm, enough. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. You have then to. Then we just. I'm just not involved in that banner. I'm sorry. Can't. No, but if you're rated, if you're good at FIFA, it's for free. Oh yeah, stage. yeah, I get that. But yeah, there's yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that's some of the stuff in that. And I'm I'm sitting there as like a senior player. I'm 34. <laughs> Imagine if I'm like 34 pulling on my knees like a dog. <laughs> Come You're on. Probably out your back. I, jump, this is what I mean though. <laughs> Get off my back's all stiff. I can't even train the next day. <laughs> all right. Do you feel you should have played more for England? Everyone says it. Everyone says it like, because you know what it is? You know that you never want to sit there and be like, ah, oh, I should have done this. I should have done that. I should have played more. But I th- there were times where I remember the times where I was flying and stuff and that. And in the back of your head, you think, you know what? Not only me, there's a lot of players that I say, mm. loads of players, Michael Carrots and that. There's loads of players that could have got more caps. But there was times where I was like, no, I, I, I should have got, I got 57 caps. And, and if it's based on merit, then I should have had a lot more. Yeah. A lot more. And then a prime example, yeah? When I went to, went to the South Africa World Cup, done well. Then I signed, I signed for Toronto. So it was 2014, was it 14, Brazil? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? So up until that point, I thought I've got credit in the bank. Surely I've done enough to merit. To, I'm sure I've done enough to get on a plane to go to Brazil. Yeah. What more do I need to prove? All these years playing for England, all the goals I scored in the Premier League. Yeah, I'm going to a different league. I'm going to the MLS. But I played from the start of the season till March. The World Cup's in the summer. So from March until the summer, surely I've done enough. It's got a lot of goals in the Europa League. Yeah. Where Hudson phoned me, uh, I'm not taking it to the World Cup, you and Ashley and Nick Michael Carrick, because I thought, that, I don't even care about the other names. Like, <laughs> you're, not ta- you're not taking me. Okay, cool. Why? Because I don't think it's fair that you've gone to another league uh, and, and uh, you're, obviously you're competing against the players that play in the Premier League. Premier League is the best league in the world, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool. No problem. Yeah, no problem. Cool. I was hurt, but hey, no problem. But around about that time, I was so sharp, and I thought, should be in that squad. Yeah, yeah. Even if I'm not playing every game, I was 31. I should be in, should be in that squad. So I'm going to another league. But then, like, like, now, it's different now, because players will go to whatever league they want, and then they'll still get an England called up. So it's, it's, I'm, this, this is what I'm saying, it's different. I get, there is still that, or well, people say, you see it on socials, like that element of, like, you know, you've got Tomori out in AC Milan, won the league, doesn't get called up. Don't get called like up. Ward Prowse, that, that. Yeah, all of that. And it's just, yeah. and I guess, is it, would you rate, uh, would you, if you was manager, would you pick? On oh, merit. Would you pick on merit, yeah? Yeah. Over? 100%, whether you've done well for me or not. Like, the, like because if you're playing well, your club, consistently, yeah. you get, you'll get, you, you, you're going to have a chance of getting in the squad. Because that's what it's about. Do you know what I mean? But it's like, if you're playing well, you're winning titles, yeah, you're in a different league, then why would, you, why, like, why would I not pick you? Yeah. Because yeah. then, then what happens with players, it gets to a stage where you think, okay, cool, no problem. I don't even care now. And then you actually get called up for England yeah. instead of feeling, and it's not the same. And it should be the best, the best feeling ever because that's the pinnacle. You're playing for England. It's good, not only for you, for your family and everyone, like all your friends, your family. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's special. Then, but that's what happens. You get to the point where you think, okay, like, what, what more do I need to do? Of course. There's loads of players like that. Loads of players that should have played a lot more. But I, at the time, I did feel that because there was times where I remember, um, I remember one game where I sat down. I remember I was hurt. Like, you know, when you sit there and I, and I was just like, I could, I could actually cry when I sat there. We played against Scotland. And up until that point again, I felt like I'd done loads. Mm. Never pulled out any squad. Even if I had little knocks and niggles and stuff like I'm staying here yeah. and I'm playing. And we played against Scotland. I remember sitting on the bench and then Roy Hodgson, oh, Ricky Lambert, yeah, go and get warmed up. And then Ricky warmed up to be fair to him and he was flying. Come on, scored a header. Um, of course, you're happy for him because it's not about him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But then I thought to myself, that's mad, you know? Like, it's, yeah, like, it's almost like, oh, your time's finished now. Onto the next one, but, but but then you're thinking, no, 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 nothing's changed. Yeah, yeah. When you say like that's that's how I felt. For ah, oh, what? So everything I've done, like it's just like ah, oh, next. It's mad. That's crazy. And I remember, I, I, and I remember that game. 
I remember just thinking, wow. And I thought, no, nah, I just don't even want to be here. So how do you deal with that? Because, again, match is done. Go back to your it's just you. Yeah, man, it's hard. Like, does it play a lot on your mind? Yeah, I have to phone my mum to calm me down. Honestly, I phone my mum and that, and she's like, listen, don't worry. What's for you will never pass you. So if, if what's for you will never pass you, it, like, that's how you need to think. It's not your time. Leave it. It's fine. Because what's for you will never pass you. That means it doesn't matter what people do. If someone tries to hold you back, they'll never be able to. Mm. You'll get where you need to get to. It doesn't matter. It might be a little bit longer. Like Arteta, do you know, see Arteta's <laughs> interview when he was talking and that. I might go this way, I might go that way. You, you want to go this way, but sometimes life, like, do you know what I mean? You get d- different cars yeah, and that. You yeah. might have to go this way, but what's for you will never pass you. And if you're meant to get there, you'll get there regardless. And, and that's how I used to think. That's my next Insta quote, you know. What's for you will never pass you. Better. But with everything. Like, like, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's another player I'm going to mention. He's probably, yeah, he was defo under your wing or like, yeah, below you when you was at Tottenham, Harry Kane. Do you, would you take credit for some of his finishing ability? No. Or did he always have it? I'd take credit for that. No chance. <laughs> no. I could, I'm not going to take credit, but I remember when I spoke to Harry and he said, ah, oh, I, I, I looked up to you, um, love your finishes, all that sort of stuff. Like, I looked up to Wrighty and then obviously yeah, Harry. Yeah. But you can't take credit because I think Harry finishes, that's like, you can't teach that. Nah. Nah, you can't teach that. That's a gift, isn't it? Like, you can't just like, but he always had, he always had that though, Harry. And he went on loan to different clubs yeah, and yeah. people said that, you know, he's going to be mobile enough for the Premier League and he's not quick. And, and in credit to Harry, he just thought, okay, cool, no problem. I'm going to work as hard as I can. I'm going to work as hard as I can because in the youth team, he weren't like, weren't the best player, but Pochettino come in, changed his diet. Pochettino could see that there was something there. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? This, this kid can finish, do you know what I mean? And changed his diet. He got sharp, strong, lean, and that was it. The man just like, Mate, just kicked on. This is the argument I have with like my friends. It's like, they look at the whole you know, staying at, like, he stayed at Tottenham for too long, hasn't won anything. But I'm like, the guy scores 20 plus goals consistently. Every season. Yeah. Every in season. In terms of individual, like, like, people say that and that, but at the end of the day, it's like, um, you can't take that away from him. No, of course the, not. Like, right. the finishes, all sorts of goals, but not even just the goals. Like, you look at him as a footballer, like, it's unbelievable. Like, I, I would love to play with Harry. It's yeah. almost like he mastered, when he was, like, that number nine, he mastered that. And then to go from a number nine to master like being a number 10 <laughs> and assists and, yeah. and Harry passed the ball like it's him crazy. and what? Him and, him and Kevin De Bruyne. It's crazy. Like that, probably yeah. two best, well, two best passes in the Premier League and it's just like a special player, man. And it was hard for him. It was hard for him. He didn't come through when he was 16, 17 and get yeah. to the first team. He had to work hard. And he sat on a, he went on loan and sat on a bench. Sat on a bench well, at yeah. Leicester, him and Vardy. Yeah. Vardy's another one. Coming to the game late, grafted, Grafted, didn't cut any corners, just worked hard, and then look, look, look what they became. I think people ignore that that side of it, yeah, and just focus on like the now. And it's like you got to look at the whole, at the whole picture, in it, like. the whole picture, because you have to, because then, because because there's a lot of young kids that get released, and then it must be hard for parents and and for young players, because when that's all you know, and then you get released, but then I'll 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 love to think that these young players can look at the likes of even way before. Talk about like strikers, Kevin Phillips, Ian Wright. The reason I mentioned Kevin Phillips because he got like a European top goal scorer, didn't he, at yeah, one point? Yeah. Coming to the game late. Ian Wright, you're not good enough. He's playing for 10 and B, then he worked in, he had a normal job. And then Palace are chasing him, come for the trial, nah, nah, nah. If I come for the trial and I don't get in again, then I lose my job. I've yeah, got kids, yeah, I've got yeah. mortgage, I've got all this sort of stuff. And then he goes. That's mad, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? And then the rest is, the rest is history, isn't it? I mean, so do you, do you feel, let me like, this is a question I've never asked. Are you, are you satisfied with your journey into football? Like, do you feel like, like you look at like the Ian Wrights and stuff and they're like, oh my God, like they had one chance. Whereas you, it's like, it was laid out for you and kind of like not, you said it was like different. To, up, it was, yeah. It's a lot different. To yeah. That. It was quite, quite a lot easier. A lot easier. Yeah. But do you know what it was? Um, that you have to appreciate the players like the writers, Sil Regis, or, or, or like the Les, yeah. John Barnes. Yeah. Because remember, Barnes is playing 
Brinkham getting booed. Barnsley's playing for Watford and they're chucking bananas on the yeah. pitch. Yeah. Like, re- being racially abused off the terrace, all that sort of stuff. And it's almost like these are paved the way for us lot to do what we've done and come through and then all these different campaigns that kick it out and show racing the red card that's yeah. been since, what, 93, got launched and all that sort of stuff. So that means when we came onto the scene now, we didn't have to do with all of that. It was just like, just go and enjoy your football. None yeah. of that, all that other stuff. Yeah, you might come across it a little bit, but at the same time, it's like they paved the way for us. So it's almost like you look at that and you just appreciate those players. That's why if I see any of, the, any of those players, you got to big them up. So there. much love for them. Yeah, of course. I still feel like a kid when I see them. When I see, I saw, I saw Les the other day. I played with Les. <laughs> but when I see Les, I look at Les like, oh my God, Les. <laughs> Sir Les. I look at right, I love right. Jack, all of them. Yeah. Because if it weren't for them, then it won't be as easy for us. And I, to me, I've never even thought of it like that because they, they, they literally were in the firing line. Firing line. And then now you guys... I can't imagine playing a game and then people dashing bananas at me and then abuse... Like, do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, it's, it was hard. All right, cool. Um, I'm going to touch on Sunderland quickly. Bradley. Like that, you see that? Like me being a... Like, I've just had... I've got three month year old at home as well and, oh, I'm, wow. and a two year old and I'm like like when I see that yeah. it comes up a lot I'm like bro like that's mad like that's something I would love to do, do and, that's, and that's and that's like um, that's not even football that's beyond football yeah exactly yeah so that's but, but, this, is, but this is what I say to people like I'm not gonna when I, was, when I was playing football or even now like I love the game because the game's given me so much like my family like do you know what I mean so yeah. if we went for football I never would have met Bradley do you know what I mean? But at the same time, I do believe, because I used to ask questions like, why me though? I didn't understand it. I said, Gemma, yeah, but I, I could, like, you know, you're asking questions because you could have loved any, any player. Yeah, literally, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I didn't understand it and that. And it was like, it was just so powerful. It was just mad. Like, when I, when I first met him, that little kid was like, used to look into my soul. Like, it was, bro, this peak. Yeah, peaks. It, was, it was deep like that. So, and then for me, it was, it, it, then it went, it went about football. I just thought, ah, oh, let me just go and see him at the hospital. And then towards the end, it was tough because when I started to understand what's going on, yeah. when he had, obviously he had like neuroblastoma, there was no cure. Like, do you know what I mean? It was tough. And I just thought, okay, I should speak to, 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 to Gemma. When it, at times when there was a little bit of hope, then it was almost like, no, actually there's not now. So it was hard, man. And then I, I remember I was on the, I was on the, uh, the plane. So I left Sunderland, mm. went to Bournemouth. And I was on the plane going to uh, Marbella for pre-season training, yeah? And I remember a few days before that, I saw Bradley. I went to the house because she phoned me. Gemma phoned me, his mum, and said, I think like, he could go anytime. Yeah. I, 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 was in, I was on holiday somewhere and I landed. I said, Gemma, I'm coming now. This was like midnight. Got in my car, drove to the house. I was in bed with Brad's and I just sat there and I held him. And then it was like, then it was, what? I was there for like a few hours. And Gemma goes, well, you might as well obviously just get home, get some sleep, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, sign for Bournemouth. On a plane, going to my bear, landed. Literally, as soon as I land, I put my phone on like that. My phone just started going off. So, what's going on? Some, someone phoned me. Hi, Jermaine, uh, some BBC News, blah, blah, blah. How do you feel about Bradley passing? I said, I put the phone down. I just, rea- I just put the phone down. Like, I didn't know what to say because I didn't know. Yeah. I just put the phone down and I was so angry and I thought, as, uh, uh, as this person won, got yeah. my number, <laughs> how can they just phone me? How can they have the. Like, you know how I feel. Yeah, how can you course, phone me yeah. and say to you, how do you feel? And then, um, and then the, my, yeah, my phone just went crazy and I spoke to Gemma, blah, blah, blah. And then the funeral was just like, when would you ever see, right? I said to someone, when would you ever see, because I know the rivalry, yeah. Newcastle and, and, and uh, Sunderland, <laughs> Geordies and Macam, yeah. it's just crazy, right? I remember standing at the funeral, it was like Notting Hill Carnival. It was packed, <laughs> I, I the saw streets. That, yeah, I see, yeah. I remember looking and I see Newcastle fans and Sunderland fans standing together. Newcastle shirt and Sunderland shirt. The whole street standing together for this little boy's funeral. And I thought, you know what? This is powerful. You'll never see this again. Like these two sets of fans that hate each other, rivalry, yeah, yeah. are standing together for Brad's funeral. Six. That's mad. Yeah. And that, that's credit to you. Obviously, you brought light to his, his situation. You brought light to him. His, 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 his life and you made all of these people like you raised probably helped raise a lot of money and all of that for him mm-hmm. and you got to big yourself up because you're not 
you're not just any footballer. You are Jermaine Defoe, do you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. like, you entering that kid's life has just made him live a hundred years in yeah. six, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, obviously I knew that. Because Jemmy always, she used to say to me all the time, like, as soon as he hears your, as soon as he hears your voice, it's just like, oh my God, where is he? Sort of thing. So obviously I knew this and that, and it was like a nice feeling. It was hard, but obviously you have to remain strong. Mm. Um, and, and that's why I just wanted to spend as much time with him as possible. Went to his birthday party. <laughs> Towards the end, it was tough though, because he was in a lot of pain. Yeah. And he was agitated and stuff. Um, but it was just like, I mean, I, I'm still close with the family now. You know, we still do a lot yeah. you know, to raise money yeah, for the course, foundation and stuff. But yeah, he was, he was a special, a special boy. He was a little character. I used to do, remember he used to do this thing. <laughs> I said, Gemma, why is he doing that? Like, who did you show him to do that? Like, nah, the cameras come out. Like, he'd be sitting here like this and he'd be like, then the cameras come out and be like, mad. Little sick, characters. Man, yeah, sick, man. but it was, just, it was just so sad and that. But like you said, yeah, to, like, spend a, I've still got a lot of good memories of Brad's. Yeah, of course, of course. And, and you know, it's an amazing family and that, but it was, it was hard. And when I, when I, and to be totally honest, when I left Sunderland, the first, that first season at Bournemouth, I wasn't, like, I wasn't the same. I, in terms of like, just like mentally, my head was just like, you know, just feel like something missing because mm-hmm. I was so used to walking out with Brad's. Yeah. And it was just so heavy on me. Like every game I played, I didn't feel myself. When one of my cousins messaged me, right? My cousin, Clyde, he messaged me one day. He was watching Match of the Day. He messaged me, he said, oh, cuz, you all right? I said, yeah. We're men, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Of course I'm alright. Like even if I'm not, I'm gonna yeah, say yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. He said, "You sure?" I said, "Yeah, why? What's wrong?" I was nah, just your body language on a pitch and that like, not the same. Like, so no, no, I'm fine. So, like, but when I look back now, it was yeah, it was tough because it was just so raw. Just lost Bradley, and then I was just signed for a new club. Yeah, and I'm at Bournemouth, and it was just like, yeah, it was it was it was hard. And I struggled cr- there, to be fair. That's crazy. Yeah. It's like I feel like you have abandoned that whole. Yeah, journey, just so it? much happened. Yeah. And where I didn't feel like I had time to like, even grieve it, like, it, was just, it was just like that summer. Because I signed for a new club, it was like I was just gone. Yeah. Like then, it's like, bang, now I need to focus on being back at Bournemouth and, you know, I want to get off to a good start and all that sort of stuff. But then, what, a few weeks before, I'm at his funeral. It's a, it's a lot. Which I mean, oh, okay. So it just okay. felt heavy on me. Can imagine. I'm going to wrap this up. Last question. Last question. When did you feel like it was time to hang it up and to top that up? What are you doing? Like, what are you doing now? When did I feel, do you know what? When I got to, <laughs> like when Joe Rebo, <laughs> Calvin Bassey, Glenn Kamara, <laughs> and then all the other boys started calling me uncle. No way. I thought, I like, it's <laughs> 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 like, coming off the train, uncle, uh, uncle. And then, do you know what? It was, it was funny though. I said, like, you lot are taking a pit, like, uncle. And um, <laughs> then I thought, do you know what? It's nice though, like, a respect thing. Yeah. It, was, it was amazing. But, it happened so quick. I remember being a young player and then all of a sudden it was just like, bang. I was at 30, I was at Rangers at 35, scored a lot of goals, 36, still felt sharp, mm. won the league. But then I signed another contract. Uh, and then before I signed my last contract, I remember Tottenham messaging me saying, oh, basically like, uh, when you finish playing, come back to Tottenham, do all your badges, all your coaching and stuff. And I said, yeah, but I'm on another year. <laughs> then Steve, he said, okay. Then what happened was we won the league at Rangers. <laughs> And in football, it doesn't matter how good you are, who you are, it's a business. Yeah, of course. And I remember we won the league, right? But the few days before, Stevie called me in the office and he said to me, Stevie Joe, said to me, ah, he said, listen, Jay, he said, if it was up to me, he actually said that, he said this in a change in one of the games, the squad, right? <laughs> we're all sitting there and uh, everyone's quiet. And he looked at me and said, you know what? He said, just to finish off, I just want to finish off saying something. He said, you see you, he said, you're a credit to the game. So as he started talking, I thought, oh, Gaffer, don't, please don't even cry in front of the boys. Yeah. So you're a credit to the game. Um, and it was, if it was up to me, I'll give you a 10-year contract now on the table. Um, and then once, and it was, it was, he said a, sort of a few words and stuff like that. You should be proud of yourself, what you, how you conduct, all that sort of stuff. And I remember then he pulled me and said, you know what, the club are going in a different direction. They want, there's a centre forward they want to get uh, fashion Sakala. Like he's got legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But hopefully the Champions League next season, blah, blah, blah. I said, boss, no problem. Honest. I would say I just knew. So in my mind, I thought, you know what? Okay. I might just finish playing. So when he said this to me, we're, we're obviously celebrating winning the league and that. 
Sport. Yeah, it's cool. No, I'm dead. It's, it was the biggest league title to win in the club's history. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, so it was just like crazy. So then when he told me that, that's when it hit me. I thought, I'm, that's me done, right? <laughs> but then the last two games, we played against Aberdeen. No, sorry, Celtic. Yeah. And I remember I scored a goal. The ball comes to me because, you know how I felt? Because they told me that and I thought I was finishing playing. I just felt like, I don't know, just like the weight off me. I just, now, last few games, just like. Enjoy it, yeah. I remember I scored this goal against, against Celtic. I can't remember the centre half, but twisted him inside out and I finished it. And it was nice. And then played against Aberdeen the next game. I scored a similar goal. I came in on my right foot, chopped and finished again. The boys were amazing. And then, you know what the players done? They said, you're not finishing. <laughs> Seriously, all the players said, no, no, no. Because all the, all the, at the end of the season, you know when players sign new contracts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everyone was signing new contracts. And I looked, I looked on social media and all the Rangers fans done a thing called get the fans what they want. Where's Jermaine's new contract? You're sending this player, that player. Give the fans what they want. So the club were under pressure at this point because the, the, the fans are thinking, how is he still this shot and there's no new contract? Yeah, yeah. So we're celebrating upstairs. Everyone's drunk. Right, steaming. <laughs> right, I had a little sip of red wine and I don't drink, yeah. <laughs> so, so, um, then the captain Tavernier come up to me and said, What's happening with your new deal? I said, Nothing. I said, what? Okay, no problem. I went up to the, the um, one of the guys, or source, and he said to him, Oh, well, like, basically, what's happening with JD's deal? Few the boys, what's happening? We need to keep him. How are you going to replace him? Blah, 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 blah. Then Stevie pulled me, I said, Listen, he said, The board have made a U turn. <laughs> Right? <laughs> so mad. The board have made a new turn like they want you to come back next season and play. But then what we want to do is we want to give you like a player coach to help you okay, on that yeah, journey yeah, to yeah, coaching. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Do you say that to me? I thought, you know what? I love it here anyway. I thought, yeah. Me and Steve had the same agent at the time. So he goes, what do you think? He said, listen, you know, he said, Jay, even if you, you stop playing now, I'd want you to be a part of my coaching team yeah. anyway. I said, cool, no problem. So I went away that summer. They got the deal done and I come back as a as player coach. But it was it was mad. It was like from from thinking that that's me finished, then all of a sudden signed another contract, still <laughs> scoring goals, and then done a little bit of coaching. But then I went to Sunderland. Um, because then Stevie left, went to yeah. Villa, then Gio Van Broncos come in. And I weren't really playing to be yeah. fair. Um and I remember saying to Gio, because when Gio came, he was confused. He was like, What are you, a player or a coach? <laughs> so I, so in my mind, I'm like, I'm still sharper than everyone else. Yeah, yeah. Right, nothing's changed. I don't know why. <laughs> like, I'm nearly 40, but I'm still sharp. I don't know why. It is what it is. Um, and I said, I'm a, I want to be a player. That's it. Forget about the coaching for now, blah, blah, blah. But then he won't put me in the squads and stuff like that. Yeah. Didn't really affect me. I thought, you know what it is what it is. I'm, it happens to everyone. Like, I'm 38. Like, and, uh, and then that was it. And then when I went to, and I thought, I go to Sunderland because, I don't know, it was just like an amazing story. Um, I'm coming back. What did they say? The last dance sort of thing. <laughs> and I just wanted to feel that sort of like, um, well, I love games to be fair, because I've got loads of love from the, from the Rangers fans, but I don't know, it was just, I just had to do it. Yeah. Just to stand in front of those fans again, do you know what I mean? And for Bradley and for everyone. And so it wasn't even about me, to be honest. I went back there, obviously again, uh, weren't playing. I remember I trained one day. And you know when a team plays on a Saturday? So on a Monday morning, like on a Sunday, you get the, the, the players that have not played, yeah, they come you in. get beasted. <laughs> you do like games and man for man. So I remember playing a game and, and, I've, and I've been thinking about it anyway because I remember my Achilles, my lower back and all that sort of stuff. Even though I'm still fit when I'm playing, but at the same time, listen, like I'm human. You're you know what I mean? On, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I remember um, training and we did this, this game and it was like man for man. And then I just thought, my legs just felt heavy, my back, I think. Finished training. All the players were sitting down. I went into this, there was a little room. And, it, and this is how it happened. I walked into the room and I sat down. And I went, now, nah, that's me done. That's me done. I got my phone. I phoned my mum. I phoned my cousin, Stefan. <laughs> I said, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm retiring today. I said, what? Steph goes, what do you mean? I said, I'm, reti I'm retiring today. The hardest thing. Because remember, when you start playing football, you never, you never, you never you think never you're going to yeah, say yeah, that. Yeah. I'm retiring. I'm never going to like score another goal. Yeah, you might play charity games. It's but not the competitive same, yeah. Goal, yeah. Like, and then that was it. And I sat down and I said to my mum, I said, is that how you feel? Like, you sure? 100%. And then that was it. And then 
I decided to, to, to retire. And when I did it, I knew, of course, there's going to be a lot of people that are not happy because I didn't stay till the end of the season. My contract was till the end of the season. Yeah. But then I thought, why am I blocking the way for someone else? Why am I blocking the way for another young player coming through when every time I've been in, every time I've played, I've trained, I've always give 100%. Not, it's all of me, not yeah, half of me. Yeah. Then I'm coming to training, going through the motion. I don't want to be there. And I've got to the stage where I didn't want to be there. And, and that was it. I said, no, nah, I'm not going to drag it on and block the way for another forward or you're paying me wages to, to perform and, 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 and be me. And I'm not me. So I, I just, that was it. I got in my car and that was it. And that was me done. And it didn't hit me until like a few days after. I was getting up in the morning. I'll go for a jog and that. Yeah, this is cool. I could do what I want. <laughs> I'm going Nando's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? <laughs> I could do what I want on that. But then after it does it, and then you think, oh. when, when it hits you, it's like, wow, we were watching games and stuff like that. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's, it's silent now. So used to that, that raw. Yeah. Yeah. That I used to love, that I used to crave every day. Like from Monday to Friday, prepare myself to get to hear that raw on a weekend where I get goosebumps. It's the best feeling ever. It's a silence that like, is just gone. That's it done. But I was ready for it because if someone would have said to me, you're going to make your debut at 17, a year after you leave school and you finish at 39, I'd have been like, no chance. <laughs> I'm not going to play until I'm 39. 39, that's like an that's, old yeah, man. That's, that's, that's stiff. That? 20, 22 years. Yeah. And that's I'll finish crazy. Up, yeah, know? exactly. And, I, and I'll, I'll finish on saying the reason why I was able to do that and, and, and probably, I probably still could play now. Mm. Like if I wanted to, if I, if, if I wanted to play now, I probably can play now. But the reason why that happened for me the way it did is because sacrifice and dedication. I never, I'd go to a nightclub's cousin friends and they could all tell you I'd go out. It wasn't an angel, I'd go out, never drink. Serious? But I, wouldn't, I just wouldn't drink. I would drive, I, I wouldn't drink. I wouldn't get involved with all that stuff. Fair play. Even, even when I was younger, all the stuff I did when I was younger, I didn't get to a point where oh, I've made it now. I'm going to start doing it now. Nah, I didn't do it then. I'm not going to do it now. So Fair play. Massage, ice bars, cryotherapy. I ticked every single box. And I told young players, don't, don't wait until you're 30. Oh, I need to start doing yoga, <laughs> Pilates. No, do everything now. Everything. Just do everything. And then once you leave the training, go home, do what you want. But do everything. Pep says it. Once you're here, give me everything. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? The Pilates, the yogas, the ice baths, what you eat. Speak to the doctor, nutritionist. The doctors must think, oh, here he is. <laughs> like, I should knock on the doctor's door. <laughs> Doc. I'm still friends with him now. <laughs> Doc, like, what, like, what can I take? As in, like, not what can I take, like, I mean, like, you know, certain parts of the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, can you get the nutritionist in? What can I, what can I take, um, like, supplements, like yeah, food supplements yeah, or yeah, fish yeah. oils, yeah. Amiga free, all that sort of stuff to help me. Um, around about Christmas time when there's loads of games in there, I go in there, I say, Doc, have you got them, like, them immune drinks, the vitamin C's and stuff like that? Do you know what I mean? Like, loads of stuff. I have to get on his nerve. Sign for Sunderland. I said, to the, I said to the doctor, Doc, I said, everyone's getting protein shakes after training, but it's like, it's the same. But my body's different from his. His yeah, body's different yeah, from his. Yeah. So can you do it like I say, tailor made, so you can take our bloods, and then you can put. I might need fish oils. He might not need. So then they're like, okay, then we'll do that. Then. <laughs> okay, creatine. When do I need to take creatine? Like, when, like, so I used to ask loads of questions, and then when I then I asked loads of questions, I got to the point where I knew everything. Not everything, but I knew but, a lot. Yeah, yeah. So I knew how to manage my body. I knew when I needed to train. I knew when I needed to take certain supplements, um, and I played until I was thirty nine. Easy. Listen. Fair play. I hope young, young players are listening. I'm going yeah. to end it on that note, man. Jermaine, thank you and so much. And listen to your parents. <laughs> thank you so much, man. Prime Jermaine Defoe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that guy. Yeah. Yeah. In today's market, what are you worth? And you know you're worth, so what are you asking for weekly? With my worth, 100 plus. And if I, I think Prime, probably if clubs would have said, I'll give you 95, whatever club I was at, they would have been like rejected. No <laughs> chance. Because you know, nah. Because when I look at how the game is now, and I mentioned about holding midfielders yeah. down for 100 million, English centre forward scoring goals, 100 plus. Razor sharp. To, well. Yeah, razor, razor <laughs> sharp. And you know what? I say, people say you was quick. I say to people, I weren't quick. Just what sharp. do you mean? I said, I, I don't feel like I was electric quick and that. But when it comes to sharpness, 
just that's all I worked on. All I worked on was like three, four yards. Yeah, just like yeah. be sharp as you can, like impossible to block any shots. Um, give me a little 300 grand a week. <laughs> 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 oh, hey, oh, hey, we're done, we're done, we're done.